We Are Oregon is a nonprofit organization that is working with folks that are going through foreclosure, um, getting people together to try and find community solutions to the foreclosure crisis. And we're going to be hearing from a couple of homeowners here today and their supporters uh, about uh, their sort of plans and the stand they're taking around uh, pending evictions. Um, we're standing in front of Deb Austin's house, and Deb's got some stuff to say for us. Good morning. My name is Debbie Austin. My husband, Ron, couldn't be here today as we can't afford for him to miss any kind of work. And our children, Andrew and Holly, who, even though they're grown, they still live with us, they're a little embarrassed about what's happening, and they don't want to show their faces. Well, with this is the home we've lived in for 25 years. I bought it when I was single. And now I'm married, I right. have kids, and I could tell you hundreds of stories of funny things the kids did growing up. Like when Andrew was two and a half and he laughed as he shut the door on us, locking us out and him in. <laughs> or the time when Holly was about two and a half and she got into the cupboard and the flour. I walked in to find flour from one end of the kitchen to the other with her laughing and giggling as she sat in the bottom drawer with all the storage, uh, storage lids strewn about. And yes, I did get a picture of that. Sad times too, like when we got hit by a drunk driver or got a call late at night that Ron's, Ron's mother had died. We've, we've weathered life's ups and downs in our home. Our home has been a refuge for us, a safe place to rest and regroup. But now our home is in foreclosure. Like many families across the country, circumstances beyond our control caused great hardship on us. In 2007, my husband received a pay cut and lost his second job. In 2008, he was diagnosed with cancer, and in the same month, I had a second back surgery, which crippled my right foot. In 2009, I was diagnosed with cancer. It was then we filed for bankruptcy, and though bankruptcy took care of many of the bills, cancer isn't cut and dry. Treatments and costs kept piling up. We succeeded in getting a loan modification, but the real nightmare of foreclosure began last November. We missed the house payment. I thought we'd make it up in December, but Ron wasn't able to get his overtime hours. I sent in November's payment on January 6th, and along with the late fee. And a few days later, we got a letter from our bankruptcy attorney, Todd Trierweiler, saying Home Street Bank, our mortgage holder, notified him that we were three months in default, though it had only been two. I called Home Street immediately, but they refused to talk to me as we were in bankruptcy, and legally they could only communicate through attorneys. Our attorney said he had nothing to do with it, and to call Home Street Bank again. This went back and forth for days, turned into weeks, and into months. The bottom line, we are in foreclosure. I think of all the work we've done, finishing the attic, replacing the roof, painting and repainting, <laughs> and the flowers and plants planted as remembrances of my childhood. Even a little succulent plant my, and my son Andrew gave me on Mother's Day when he was just a little guy and it's flourished all over the place. It, ours is not just a house in some community, in some city. This is home. It's our home. We have ties here. I'm sorry. My kids went to school here, and I volunteered at those schools. We help our neighbors, and they help us. We belong here, and we're not <coughs> leaving. and across the country, we're drawing the line. My neighbors, friends, supporters, and members of We Are Oregon will stand with us against any eviction notice. We will, in turn, stand with others in foreclosure, too. You know, it was tax money that was used to bail out the banks, and the government made available money to help struggling homeowners. Now it's time for these agencies to do the right thing. And that's all we're asking. Thank you. I want to say good morning to all of you. Um, my name is Maura St. Martin, and I too am a homeowner here in Portland. I'm a native Oregonian. I'm also a Native American, single parent, 
I have an eight-year-old son. He's also enrolled Native American with the Cowlitz Indian tribe. I've owned my home for the past eight years as a single parent. And I'm here today to take a stand as well with Deb and Ron, with Thomas, and all the people across the city and across this nation who are in danger of foreclosure and eviction. My story is a little bit different. My mortgage was allegedly sold by my original lender to a new owner, a new trustee. This new owner and the new servicing company used fraud and deceptive practices to put me in my situation where I am today. My home was illegally foreclosed upon and I am facing an eviction order demanding me to leave my home. I have retained some legal help through my attorney, John Bowles, through Bowles Fernandez, and I am hopeful that the courts will see the fraud that I have experienced and rule against the lender and the new property owner that never held clean title to my property. In a strange way, I'm lucky. There's a legal definition for the, for the fraud that's been perpetrated against me. However, just because all the other families gathered here aren't claiming fraud, it doesn't mean that something hasn't gone extremely wrong here in America. That's right. Yeah. These homes are not investment in instruments. They are not poker chips for the banks to wager on. They are homes with real families, with real histories and futures. We have a system that has been putting the bank's interests before the interests of our families and our communities. The banks have been quietly moving into our communities. They've been pushing struggling homeowners out and blighting our neighborhoods with empty homes. We are here today to say that we are not going to suffer in silence. That's right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. holiday season, my intention is to stay in my home, regardless of the letter I have asking me to leave. I am taking a stand with the families here, and they are taking a stand with me, because our, our homes are more important than bank profits. Yeah. Yeah. And we yeah. are more important than bank profits. Yes. Yeah. 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 I thank you for your support and ask you to take a stand with us to push back on the banking industry. We ask that all foreclosures be halted yeah. on behalf yes. of the American people yes. Yes. until further oversight can be regulated because keeping our homes is a basic human need and right. I'm speaking as a member of Unsettled Portland and as part of the 99%. Unsettled Portland is a grassroots organization and a local affiliate of the Take Back the Land movement dedicated to community control of land and housing. We are here as part of the evolution of Occupy Wall Street as it shifts into supporting people who are on the front lines of the premeditated mortgage crisis, people who are facing imminent eviction even as thousands of houses remain empty in every major city. We are here today to let those, these homeowners, Ron and Deb Austin, Amara, as well as homeowners everywhere know that there are organizers and activists of all kinds who are interested in supporting your rights to stay in your home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The political economic system has once again failed the people of this country you already know that Mayor Sam Adams is available for some well-worded hand-wringing when an eviction notice is issued. And you already know that the media talking heads are prepared to dedicate a moment of their new newscast to some head-shaking when another family is put onto the streets. 
What we want you to know right here, right now, is that we are in solidarity with you, and we will be here when the sheriff's office comes knocking, because this is your home, and housing is a human right. Yeah. 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 No bank, no predatory financial institution has a right to take that away from you, especially not when they were bailed out with our money, especially after they made billions of dollars by preying on those of us made vulnerable through a system of economic injustice, which affects access to health care, quality education, and meaningful employment. This is your home, and as long as you stand in it, we will stand with you. We are the 99%, and it's time to unsettle the bank. My name is Jack Mossbrooker. I'm a Catholic priest. I live right up the street in Sandy. And, uh, Many times I've walked through this neighborhood and admired this uh, really quite a quiet uh, neighborhood that looks like that looks good and is uh, well kept. But I never realized walking on these streets that behind these doors there were tragedies going on, and this is one of them—a tragedy that somebody would lose their home. As uh, Deb mentioned, the home is a is a sacred place, and uh, and. Uh, as a friend of mine always, always likes to say, he said, when I was a kid, I went home. That was my refuge. That's where I was safe. That's where, that's where I uh, went when the things were tough and where I always went at the end of the day. And I think that that's, that is a, it was important to hear and to understand that this is a house, but it's a home. And the house and the home are the building blocks of this community. And when that's destroyed and upset, it destroys the community itself. And I, so that's, that is the tragedy. The tra that's one, one aspect of that tragedy, that, that our communities can be torn apart by these, for, by these foreclosures. I think that there is another part to this, and that's, that other part is, has, has been mentioned too, that the banks have put us in this situation because of greed. And now because of greed, they want to destroy our communities. They have wonderful mottos, service to the community, we're part of your community, you know, we want the community to grow. Yes. <laughs> not, it's not what happens on the ground, it's not what happens here. It's, that's another piece of this tragedy. That that's not, that these people, if the banks really wanted that to happen, if they believed those mottos, they would put out their brightest people to find ways to get around these foreclosures, to find ways to keep people in their homes, to find ways to keep communities together. You know, so just a couple of weeks ago, we had in the, in the, in, the, in church, we read about uh, Jesus in the last judgment saying you know, to condemning people for uh, not, not paying attention to the least, the people who are in trouble, the people who are struggling. And he said, when you didn't do it to these, you didn't do it to anybody. And this is, this is our, I, where we stand. We stand for people to have food, shelter. We stand, we stand for people to have uh, a job, a decent job. We stand for people to have all these things because that's what builds families. That's what families need to build and to build their community. And so I'm, I'm here to support these, these uh, communities. And I think that we need to. We need to fight for this, and we need to have this, and we need to not allow these banks to take advantage of us, but to stand for what we want, families and families with security, building our communities. I'm the only, well, there's three of us that are her only real neighbors that are actually her real neighbors <laughs> in a narrow sense of that word. And interestingly enough, I'm uh, Father David the Deacon of the Greek Orthodox Cathedral, but I'm not here speaking for the ancient faith, uh, I'm here because I love my neighbor. Uh, it's that simple, and this is my neighbor, and uh, uh, my wife is here, and her next door neighbor, Tony, is here. Today is the feast of St. Nicholas, a beloved bishop in the Greek Orthodox Church, famous for his care for the poor, and in particular for poor women. Uh, there was only two opportunities for poor girls who did not have the money for dowries in, Nic in Nicholas's time in the 4th century. Prostitution and domestic slavery. And so it was his custom to give them money out of the wealth that had been given to the church 
at night, chucking it through the windows of their houses. It was the Middle East, so they didn't need glass. And from that particular event comes all of the more glorified and commercialized images of Santa Claus. But I find it ironic that we're meeting here today, standing in solidarity with a neighbor who's about to lose a house on the feast of a great bishop of the early church who made his name and his reputation in helping the poor. So I, I know I, I speak for the rest of the neighbors here, but when you lose somebody who's been a part of your neighborhood for a long time for whatever reason, it really rips the guts out of a neighborhood. The neighbors that have been here the longest are the ones that keep the neighborhood together. Yes. And uh, it's always uh, horrible to lose them, and our children grew up together. So just from the heart, again, not speaking officially, but speaking because I'm your neighbor, uh, I hope that we have reached a stage in this country where we realize that we are terribly uh, off course. Yeah. Terribly off course.